So this video is about healing through creativity, the very thing that damages and compromises and limits creativity. And it's a very personal story. It's my story. Because what I'm finding is that I experienced something late last year that definitely compromised and paralyzed my creative impulse. And I had no idea how I was going to go about healing that. All I knew was that I was stuck. I kept feeling like no matter how much I desired to work creatively, no matter how much I wanted to paint, no matter much, how much I wanted to move forward with grabbing my art supplies and working on a canvas or opening a sketchbook or writing poetry, that nothing would come, nothing would emerge, nothing manifested. I could have sat in front of a blank page for hours and nothing would have come to me. And I didn't know how to get at the root of the problem. I didn't know exactly how to confront the wound that was there or even its actual nature. It all stems from a wound that I received late last year that I agreed to receive. I know that this is something that I signed up for in order to get at other issues that are even deeper than the ones that I'm confronting that are related to those specific events. The very long story short is that I offered to create something that piece of artwork was intended to be a gift for someone from a collective of friends. This international collective of friends really wanted to do something beautiful and big and astonishing. And when I heard of that intent, I offered to create a painting. So the others thought that was a great idea and the commission was created and the practical consideration of how do they compensate me for this as an artist and a craftsman and my only real concern was yes I'd like to be reimbursed for material costs and for shipping expenses to send the artwork on to the intended recipient and above and beyond that the plan had evolved that extra funds extra monies that were collected would be sent on to the gifts recipient. That that would be a lovely, heartfelt gesture from this collective, which I thought was really stunning and it moved me very deeply. And I had no problem being put into a position where I'm in the States, the gifts recipient is in the States, everyone else is scattered all over the globe and the dilemma, the practical dilemma of how to collect money um, was resolved when one person in the group asked me, asked us, Andy and I, if we would be in charge of collecting money and also collecting the names ultimately of people who wanted to participate because the intention was to place the names on the canvas so that the person who received it would always know that it was a gift from this group of people and they would all be mentioned in a really special way, really be included in a very special way. So we had raised funds before for folks in need as a part of our ministry. So we had a PayPal account that we had used before to do this and that worked beautifully with no complications. So 
we offered that as a solution. People deposited money and there was no set amount. It, whatever someone could afford was more than fine with us. The actual expenses for the materials that I was using and the shipping costs weren't really going to be that much. And we were looking forward to being able to extend that larger gift. Um, and we waited. And we started seeing the monies come in and we let people know when we receive them. Then some things got in the way of completing this project. Our lives are endlessly complicated. <laughs> Andy and I are shaman. At the drop of a hat, spirit will decide to offer us experiences and send us things to deal with and manifest, manifest stuff for us to attend to that we had no intention <laughs> of dealing with when we'd gotten up that particular morning or made plans for that particular day. And so those processes would take the better part of a day or a week or a month. And the creative motivation would get sidetracked and the time and energy that was available for me to actually work on creative endeavors was severely restricted and limited by those other needs popping up. We're also parents to three children. One of those children has two spirits. And the children, being a part of a shaman family, often have needs that require us to drop everything and attend to them, and that can take two or three or four hours of us investing our complete time, energy, and attention into them in order to provide them with what they need. So these things were happening and I wasn't painting. Now, I didn't really want to divulge this kind of intimacy, um, these kinds of intimate details with people that I really didn't know very well. I assumed that because these were very heart-centered people, and very spiritual people, by and large, that there would be some compassion and understanding for the delays that I was experiencing. And without detailing my reasons or making excuses, I thought it would be enough to simply state that there are delays. And this isn't moving along as quickly or as smoothly as I had hoped but that I was intending on working on the painting whenever possible and that I would give updates as I could. Well, silence is suggestive, I have learned over the years. And my silence about my process and not being as confessional as I could be about the reasons why I had delays in my creative um, time and in my process <sighs> led people to wonder and to worry and those concerns gave rise to a collective fear and insecurity that culminated in accusations of my ripping people off, that somehow this was some kind of con game and that either there was no painting or if there was a painting there was no intention to finish it and certainly there was no intention to send any surplus funds that were raised along to the intended recipient of the gift. Now <laughs> this wounded me deeply for a lot of different reasons. Some were my own personal issues that were being poked at that had to do with integrity and being seen. And it hurts to have your integrity questioned. It hurts to have people not see you for who you are and not to have the evidence of your beingness recognized. 
it hurt to have my motivations questioned and my actions questioned. And I dealt with the shock of that and had no need to defend myself at all. Andy and I had not done anything wrong. We had held the money in good faith and I had every intention of finishing the painting as soon as I possibly could. And the deadline had been, by consensus of the group, pushed past New Year's. And this was taking place a week after the New Year. And the timing of it rather surprised me. But it gave me a chance to examine my failings in communicating things to people and not being as open about my process as I could have which may have set people's fears to rest. I'm grateful that after the dust settled, that people went on their way and dealt with it as they were meant to. And the situation didn't cost me anything of any true value. The people who remain in my life, including the intended recipient of the gift, are people that can see me for who I am and more than anything just wanted the drama to die. <laughs> Didn't need the added anxiety of coping with this beast that had been created because of people's collective fears and insecurities. Theirs and mine and so I did some healing work with that and I moved on. But what I've experienced is that something died. From out of that experience, something died. And I haven't really drawn or painted anything since. The wound has to do with how it is that I view my artistry and creativity itself because the way that I work is such a surrendered, receptive process. I don't plan my pieces. I never know what they're going to be exactly when I begin. And I may start and stop, I may pause many times in the course of creating a painting or drawing. They might sit for days or weeks on end. Sometimes I've picked up canvases after years of them sitting there, my believing that they're finished, and them saying, no, we want something else to happen now. Something else needs to emerge from here. And then I pick it up and I work on it again. I channel and I receive and that is such a pure process for me that it was that purity that felt wounded and compromised when this thing happened, when the situation erupted. And that is what I realized was damaged and why my creative impulse has just stopped and no matter how much I want to be able to take refuge in that beauty that I can help create through my artistry, I can't. <laughs> it stops dead and there's nothing to draw on. The cup is empty because the purity just isn't, it feels like it isn't there. It feels sullied. It feels tarnished. It feels violated. Because people's fears and insecurities were projected onto me and my innocence and purity was questioned. And also the motivation and intention behind anything 
that I do as a creative act, the impulse that generates my art was questioned as if somehow that could be a means of manipulation or exploitation. And that's the actual wound. I had no idea how I was going to overcome this, transcend it, heal the wound. And Andy came to me yesterday morning and was telling me about a new website which hosts a platform that allows artists to not only display and sell their artwork or market their craft, but there's also a way to invite other people into the creative process itself, into the heart of inspiration and um, practical applications and methods and media. And that really resonated with me and I really want very much to participate in that and to make a home creatively on that site that feels really right to me. But I knew that I would have to create brand new work in order to showcase who I am, what I do, how I do it. <laughs> and I had no way to be able to answer the question that I was asking myself of how I was going to do that when I just felt stuck and my creative voice felt silenced. Andy's guidance came back to me with the suggestion that I finish the landscape, that I pick up my paints and I complete the landscape, and that I insert the monsters <laughs> into the landscape in such a way that I activate the healing alchemy of my art. Because that's what I do. Every piece that I create is a form of alchemy. Each piece is deeply healing for me as I receive and I translate and I manifest. And each piece that I create is healing for others. Sometimes my works are deeply personal and I can tell the story of the inspiration and the creation and they might move people in a very broadly archetypal way. But sometimes I don't know who I'm creating a piece for. I just know that the piece wants to come through me and I let it come through me. And then eventually someone comes to me and says, that really moves me very deeply and this is why. And that begins this relationship of reciprocity, this energy exchange, which is very much like the energy exchange that I experience in friendship and other intimacies and as a shaman and healer and guide. Because a dialogue begins about something very personal and very heart-centered and very soulful. It's very rewarding. I haven't done healing work for myself through my art in a long time. It's probably been a little over a year since I completed a painting in which I explored some early memories of trauma. And that was deeply cathartic. It also helped plant a seed for later healing that was going to take place, and which has since taken place, where the root of the pain really got dug up and I was able to remove it completely forever. And that wound no, no, no longer exists and there's no scar tissue, <laughs> it's complete. And so that's the power of art as an alchemical agent of healing. 
the monsters were an inspiration that came to Andy because in a local shop we saw these whimsical landscapes um, very um, you know Kincaid <laughs> sort of cottage in the woods sort of landscapes or a sweeping vista of Sedona or something like that and someone had inserted <laughs> and superimposed these fairies and imps and goblins and all kinds of otherworldly figures that the original artist never intended to be there. And the effect was really um, charming and darkly humorous. <laughs> and so Andy said to me when we were talking yesterday morning about how am I going to heal this wound, paint the monsters. And I heard the words but I still didn't know what that was going to look like, what it was going to behave like, what it was going to be like to actually do that. And as I sat with those words, I saw the finished painting, which is very unusual for me. And because I saw it complete, when I almost never see a work complete ahead of time, I knew that I was on the right path and that the guidance was true and that this was the way that I was going to actually come through the other side of this. So I began painting a little bit yesterday, fleshing out the landscape and loving where the painting was going. And I had a short period of time by myself in order to complete the work. Um, and I got a fair amount of progress manifested there and I can see where it's going and I didn't mind putting it on pause because I knew I could feel that fire being stoked and that my creative inspiration was enthusiastic and flowing which I haven't felt in so long <laughs> and now I'm able to sustain the pause because I know I can get back into the painting, even if it waits a day or two until I have the free time to work on it again, without interruptions which just jostle me out of that receptive channel state. I know what I need to do in order to heal this now, and that seems to be about 80% of the actual work. The remaining 20%, which will push me all the way through to the other side of this, is the actual creative cathartic act of applying the paint to the canvas and drawing through the vision that I see and also the almost magical act of placing those monsters and demons onto the canvas to do what they do because they're much more than just metaphors or symbols they are actually physical manifestations of the collective fears and anxieties and insecurities that created the situation that opened up this wound. They are the actual physical vehicle that will allow me to lay to rest my own sadness and anger and frustration and regret and my sense of attachment to that concept of the purity of the act of creating as if somehow that purity could be compromised or harmed in any way why am I giving anyone that power why am I giving those little monsters that power and so they will be busy acting out their destruction in the landscape. And I will let them do that there in order to stop them from doing it within my own being. And I will sacrifice them to beauty in order to set them free from their own rather unhappy duty. 
I don't need them anymore to do that work. So I'm looking forward to finishing this piece. I'm looking forward to sharing it when it's complete. And I'm grateful for those who have come along on the journey to hear this story and to explore this with me. For those who hear what it is to have a part of ourselves that's damaged and wounded and to allow the healing to come from that very same place. The paradox of that doesn't have to remain a paradox. Just like we can use our shadows to heal the wounds that our shadows are covering and concealing really is no different. And my lens of perception through which I've looked at my creativity all my life can get wiped clean and refurbished and maybe ground down a little bit more so that I can see myself all that more truthfully and accurately. And my own authenticity then can come through. My words, my stated intention, my revelation of my process, and the creative act itself. <laughs>